Um, so today we're going to look at the problem of um, a smooth wire is bent into the shape of a helix with cylindrical coordinates rho equals r and z equals c phi, where r and c are constants. The z-axis points vertically upwards in the Earth's gravitational field. So the first question is, using z as a generalized coordinate, find a Lagrangian for a bead of mass m threaded on the wire. So... In the question, we're told that we're in cylindrical polar coordinates. So we can write that x equals r cos phi, y equals r sine phi, and z equals c phi. So if we remember the Lagrangian is L equals t minus v where t is half m v squared, so t is half m x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared. So we can first, and of course, v is potential energy. So we can immediately start computing the time derivatives. So x dot is just minus r phi dot sine phi. So we use the chain rule, right? So we do d by dt of cos phi of t. So that's just d phi by dt, d cos phi by d phi, right? So that's phi dot and that's minus sine phi. Then similarly for y, oh, sorry. So for y, it's just r phi dot cosine phi. And z dot is just c phi dot. So now we can get the kinetic, so the velocity, so the magnitude, the square magnitude of the velocity, so x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared is just minus r phi dot sine phi squared plus r phi dot cos phi squared plus c squared phi dot squared. And so that just becomes um, r squared phi dot squared times sine squared phi plus cosine squared of phi plus c squared phi dot squared. But this is 1 because sine x squared plus cosine x squared is just 1. So v squared is just r squared phi dot squared plus c squared phi dot squared. So it's just phi dot squared times r squared plus c squared. Good. Then we can just write that the kinetic energy, so t is equal to half m phi dot squared r squared plus c squared. Next, for the potential energy, in the question we're told that the z-axis points upwards in the Earth's gravitational field, so this part. So we know that the potential energy will be due to the gravitational field. So we can just write that V is just M G Z. So I'm just going to leave this Z there because if we remember in the question, we're asked to find the Lagrangian using Z as a generalized coordinate. So now we can just write the Lagrangian. So L equals T minus V equals half M phi dot squared 
r squared plus c squared minus mgz. Right, so we're almost done. We just need to find a way to have l of z. So how can we do this? So we know that um, z is just c phi. <coughs> so we can just replace phi equals z over c. Therefore, phi dot is z dot over c. Phi dot squared is z dot squared over c squared. So now we can just write L equals half M um, phi dot, sorry, you want it in terms of z. So z dot squared over c squared times r squared plus c squared minus m g z so we can just we can just write this as sorry as l equals half m z dot squared 1 plus r squared over c squared minus mg z so this is the lagrangian for the system using the z as a generalized coordinate so now if we want to do the second part of the question which asks us to find to show that the beads vertical acceleration z dot is a constant a and then to find it we can try and use the euler lagrange equations to get the equations of motion so the euler lagrange equation is dl by dz equals d by dt dl by d z dot so dl by dz is just minus mg because z doesn't appear anywhere else so minus mg and dl by dz dot would just be mz dot 1 plus r squared over c squared good and now we differentiate this with respect to time so we find that d by dt of dl by dz dot just becomes m z double dot because we're differentiating this with respect to time times 1 plus r squared over c squared and equating both we get the equation of motion so m z double dot 1 plus r squared over c squared is just my equals minus mg so so I'm just simplifying a bit and therefore <laughs> 1 plus r squared over c squared to the minus 1 because we're dividing by this and so we see that this is a constant which we call a because it has no dependence on z or t right r squared r and c are both constants g is just the constant also so z double dot is indeed a constant and next to finish the question we're asked to to determine what happens as r goes to zero so let's look at the limit limit as r goes to zero of z double dot so if we just replace r by zero here we'll find that it's just minus g so that's just the acceleration for a free-falling object <laughs>